and welcome to episode four of the Weaver Birds, hosted by Kathy from Lazy Kate Textiles and myself, Heather, um, the Inquisitive Weaver on Instagram. Um, we're coming here to speak to you every fortnight about our weaving, spinning, knitting, and whatever fiber craft we decide to explore. And um, thank you very much for all of your um, follow, well, for everyone following us, um, your likes and comments. Uh, we really enjoy reading them. And everything that we talk about will be in the description below, or I'll be able to put on the screen. Um, so, Kathy, how are you? <coughs> well, yes, yeah, better than you by the sound of it. <laughs> Bit of a cough. I do apologise. <laughs> Uh, yes, all all good, all better with this sun shining. I think. Oh, definitely, definitely. We had um, gale force winds here. Well, you would have had them as well. Um, destroyed all of my plants. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. yeah, destroyed my plants as well, and chased off some of the uh, some of the goslings, which uh, which I hope they've survived, but um, haven't seen them for a while. Oh. So an interesting topic that we have been talking about this last couple of weeks is um, note keeping and um, record keeping, I should say. And we've been discussing the different ways that we keep our records. And sadly, I don't have some of my records with me because they're at my flat, but I do have some content to show you. But first of all, Kathy, talk about um, how you keep your records whilst you're knitting and spinning, weaving. Well, haven't haven't always been particularly organised about it, which will come as no surprise to anybody. Um, but with my dyeing, I have to keep a recipe book, and so that is um, something that I've always been quite diligent about, really, because you know, if you're going to sell dyes and yarn, you need to be able to reproduce them as best you can when you're a, when you're an indie dyer. So I had this this book, um, which is just a cheap sort of ring bound book, and so all my um, all my dye recipes would go in there. Let's see if you can see that. So it's absolutely battered this book at the moment. So I do uh, the the fiber that I dyed, and then it on the bobbin, and then uh, there it is as hand spun yarn with the recipe for it and how I spun it and all that. So that's how the book was supposed to go. Uh, that happened once, and then uh, and then after that, it's just full of of dyes and recipes. So it's been, it's really good. I absolutely, I love it. I go back to it a lot of the, a lot of the time. And um, but then I did set fire to it at one point. So in the middle, uh, <laughs> there. Oh, <gasps> oh! So that was uh, some recipes went uh, went missing there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> so it's so dangerous. And then as it gets gets on, it gets more and more dirty. And the idea was. Um, that when the dyes, I would put all my dye experiments in here, and then when I'd final, finalized and perfected the dye in the recipe, it would go in this book. But then this book just became as, as dirty and, as, and falling apart as the other one. So um, I love this though. I love this book. As, as battered and bruised as it is, I, I do I love it because it's got all my, all my recipes in. So mainly, it, when it comes to record keeping, I think that's what I've done um, in the past. Since then, since we've talked about, because we talked about it at Weaverpool as well, and your record keeping, which is, you know, immaculate, isn't it? Um, I've got my, I've got a the same sort of book, but I've got weaving weaving sample book with um, little samples there. Those are rigid heddle weaving samples, got and then in the back I've got spinning spinning samples there so I am making an effort to be more organized look very neat very neat well then Heather show us what you do so I, I don't have any of my like original weaving ones or um well mainly the weaving ones that I've kept to show you but I do have some things that I have recently acquisitioned or something that I've been doing so I'll start off with my digital one which is just on my iPad and so I started doing this in the summer so I have an app on here. Where is it? It's just called Notebook. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and then inside my notebook, you can make lots of different notebooks. It's hard to show it, but I have my uh, Felicia Lowe did an epic cloth um, for, was it 2019? Was it? Yeah. yeah. And so I decided 
before the pandemic and before my surgery and everything, I was going to do one, but that has kind of fallen to the wayside. But um, I've got spinning projects, weaving projects. Um, so for, for example, if I go in there, then I've got different projects listed. And then, so this one is, I want to be able to at some point spin enough yarn to make a jumper. So I'd chosen the pattern that I wanted to do, which was the spin raglan by Andrew Maori. And so then I've got what I was thinking I needed, so like the wraps per inch, um, what's the gauge I needed, and then how I was spinning it. And then I've got like the yarn I was choosing. So this is from World of Wool Aquila. So I've got a spinning and a knitted sample that I just took a picture of. And then, whoo, try not to drop it. Then as, as we go down though, we have like me sampling different yarns, uh, sorry, different fiber that I was spinning. So they're the same, technically the same fiber, but different colors. And my comments on them, and then I decided, because I usually do a three ply to try an M ply, and then I started talking about how much grist I needed, but stopped at that point. So I kind of was at one point, though I haven't been so good recently, um, try to keep up with that and so some of them are quite short but I have what I was doing um, so they're the kind of things that I was keeping on my iPad now I have some things that I keep on me whilst I'm doing it so in my sock knitting bag I have this which I picked up at one of the um, fiber festivals and so this is from Devinson Yarns and it's a little project notes thing and so it, <laughs> This is not neat. In the back, I have all my different project notes from different socks. And so it's very neat. And generally I try and, and go back and like, oh, how did I modify that pattern? And hopefully sometimes I've written in, but so that's just for like my on the go thing. And I bought two of these, but I can't, I can't find them. But I find this really handy, um, especially because I don't want it to look, I don't care if it doesn't look nice. Then another thing I bought, I was watching um, the Knitting Expats podcast. Oh, and yeah. She was walking, doing a, a live, well, it wasn't live, but videos where she was walking around a show. And um, anyway, I went on the website of someone that I saw at the show and I found these work in progress cards. Um, I think I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I think it's Katen Beek or I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um, and it's so cute, it's one of these little envelope things. And they're just little project cards that you can put in your knitting bag. That's a good so idea. Here's one. So I've got, this is for my current Felix pullover. And so it's just got all the information, like the other day I forgot what size I was knitting, so I've, I've written down what size I've knitted. And then I actually did do a knitted, um, you know, gauge swatch. So. Oh. She puts holes in the bottom. And so I just kind of attached that there and I attached a small sample of the yarn I was using. And then it's also got like a little shopping list on the back. So I needed some DPMs, which I have bought. Um, so that's, that's another thing. And then, cause my notes for my socks have been rather scattered um, and some of them I've, I've lost and stuff. I decided going forward, that I wanted to keep um, better notes. And so I came across on Tangled Yarn, this uh, knitting notebook by Lane. We were discussing how to pronounce it. Lane, Lane. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> we can glaze over it. But it's, it's just quite neat. It's got, you know, your project and you can write down, you know, your yarn, how much needles, gauge, etc., And then a blank page for notes. And then, sorry, a line page for notes and then two blank pages. And so I'm going to put in my notes basically. And then on the blank pages, I'm going to put in a little sample of the yarn. And I've got a little Polaroid printer. So I'm going to print out Polaroids of my finished socks and stick them in the blank pages. And so this is going to be my little knitting project book for now. Um, so I think with my... Um what I found with the with the guy recipe book that I've got is yeah. that although that in particular is a bit of a it's a bit of a mess, but it's an experiment book, so it's not supposed to be 
Um, it's not supposed to be perfect, but I have, I, I did go through a phase where I wrote down, I don't know what the weather was like or how I was feeling that day or the music that I was listening to that day. And so that when you go back to have a look at those, um, those, that record, you can remember exactly what that day was like and what sort of inspired you. And I found that really helpful. So loads of notes. My, my weaving book is just full of notes and it's exactly like your dye book, but without the dye stains, it's, you know, it's chunky. It's got notes written all over the place and things stuck in. And it's, I think I would get more pleasure from like when I was doing my lab books, if my lab book started filling up yeah. and looking really like chunky, I'm like, I've done good work. <laughs> well, I was talking to um, Kate, one of the, um, my friends this morning, and we were saying that when you get a book, and it starts not to be able to close. There's some kind of satisfaction about that, that it's full up with work that you've done. Yeah. And that, I don't know why, but it's, it's very satisfying. It's a plain book. It's not going to be able to close at some point. I'm a bit worried. We've all got photos stuck in and, you know, and, and maybe I'll try and stick some samples in and stuff. But, um, yeah, the aim is, is to mess it up. So it's, well, not mess it up, but, you know, it's, it, it yeah. needs to look used. <laughs> It so. does. You need to not be too scared about making a mess of it because yeah. it's, it's a record. It's a record of, of everything you've done. And, and you always, this is what I find, I always think, oh, I'll remember that. I'll remember what I did. I'll remember what, what, <laughs> what that wool was. Or, and, and you absolutely don't. So you need to write it. Too much information is better than too little. And Definitely. just get, get, it, get it written in as quick as you can. Um, so that you don't stress about it and it becomes one of those beautiful things that is just, you know, waste of time having. At our um, Weaver Pool meeting, um, a woman came in and she had brought her, her notebook of all the different fabrics and things that she had made during her career. And it was big and chunky and sl I'd say slightly dogged. Uh, and it was just, it was absolutely beautiful. Well, it, it was Emma, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was just Emma. lovely to look through. Hadn't she had a career and it'd been, oh, I wish we, we should look up these words we're supposed to pronounce. Passamentia, passamentary. Um, anyway, all kinds of, it was all sort of tassels and, oh, yeah. and yeah. things like that, wasn't it? And yeah. it was, it was really beautiful. That it, was, it was lovely, yeah. Okay. So we need to carry on keeping our, keeping our notes. Yeah, and we should say that we're, um, it's really nice for us to sit here and, and discuss our projects with each other and with you guys. But it's also people leave comments for us. But I, I really want to be able to see what everyone else is doing. And so we can get ideas from other people because I, you know, I get ideas from people from Instagram and the whole I want to be able to create a, a sharing that because um, I want to see what everyone else is doing as well. Um, so we've got a Ravelry page set up. So people can put in the projects that they're doing and everything. And I think, Kathy, you said you were going to help set up a Facebook page. Um, yeah, if, if people would prefer one or the other, or, the, or, or even both, um, you know, if you, if you would like a Facebook uh, group, then we, by all means, we can, we can do that. And then we can share what our community is uh, creating. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so. Weaving. Kathy, right. tell me about your weaving in the last two weeks. Um, well, uh, I think I took on a little bit of a more complicated project than uh, really I should have done. So it's been very slow and quite frustrating. So I've decided to just leave it, <laughs> walk away for a little while. I've got about two inches of, of weaving on the, uh, on the tea towels that I've got, but I've made some, some mistakes where I should have, um, I've missed heddles or I've missed the reed or I've been trying to um, slay the reed with uh, one, one and two threads and I've got mixed up. And so um, it's just taken such a long time. So I've just had a break from that. And um, it, I think it's gonna be a doable thing, but it's just been a bit of a, bit of a trauma. I'll take a I'll take a photo for you, Heather, and then you can you can yeah. post it. It's okay, but it's not. Is this the half drow tea towels? No, I haven't even got as far as those, mm -hmm. and I'm so pleased that I did it because I bought 
that lovely um that lovely yarn from my fine weaving yarn if i'd have made the mess that i've made with that yarn i would have been really upset this is just a little trial with um with plain cotton okay so at least i've not lost a whole load of of thread and i'm going to see it through and yeah. if they're tea towels and i use them and i use them as tea towels and then then that's okay that's okay but it is it is downheartening when it doesn't go as well as you want it to it is it is definitely is but then that's the process of weaving we're all going to weave a load of duds and we're all yeah. going to weave a load of brilliant projects so and it's a process of learning as well and when you buy handmade things i know i've heard it said before that it's not just that thing that you buy it's all the years of those experiments and those tweakings and and failures and and this isn't a failure it's just been quite frustrating um, and so that's why that's why people who are skilled that's why their things are are expensive yes because it is a, a huge skill so i have a finished object well since we're talking about tea towels i'll show you what i'm up to on the Haldral tea towels so i have finished warping my two chains um Wow, 407, no, 447 threads here, three wow. meters. Um, so yeah, I just have to put it on the loom, which will be, it takes some time, but I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so long, doesn't it? It does take a long time, but uh, you just have to try and learn to love the process. You do. Yeah. And then I do have a finished object. It's not fully finished. It has come off the loom, it has been washed, but I haven't finished the ends. Um, so this is the weaving project that I was doing um, using the hand-painted, hand-dyed warp from Hilltop Cloud. Um, so it's a gradient warp and it is in a 20 over two silk. And my um, weft is also the same silk, but just in the natural colorway. So the warp goes from a I should say my draft is, I think it's called Happy Tea Towels. Um, but I can't remember where I found it. I did buy it, I think, but um, anyway. So it starts with turquoise and then it goes gradually to a pink and then through to a deeper pink and then through kind of like a, a deep purpley black. And wow. It's it's not as drapey as I want. Maybe I should have done a, a slightly more open set. So I did. Oh, I can't remember what I did now. <laughs> twenty. Star. Twenty. Yeah, it is uh, twenty ends per inch. I think I did. She suggested fifteen, and um, I I went a bit tighter because I didn't I didn't want it too open. But I think maybe I should have done it more open. It's beautiful. It, 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 it's lovely. And I like the pattern. So on one side, you've got um, the pattern going across. And then the other side, it's a bit harder to see, but the um, floats go up. So it, oh, it's, it's, it's nice. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the effect of having the um, hand-dyed warp. I like the color changes and how, you know, in the middle, mainly in the middle anyway, it's easier to see how it's kind of like, oh, I don't know if it's easy to see, you know, patchy, the colors, like you get little areas where you get splashes of pink coming through. And I, I think that looks, it's just nice. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So really? I think for me, weaving is a much slower um, craft. And so I don't feel like we've, <laughs> we've had much to show. Um, no. But I am moving along on my project, so this is finished, and I will, I'd like to say I will have walked and started by our next episode uh, on my right. team. Right, well, we'll hold you to that. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any repercussions, though. <laughs> okay, so knitting. Knitting. What? I've carried on with my sock, mm -hmm. my toe-up sock, and... Um, there we go. I have got a little bit further and I've started uh, with 
the other ones that and the, the reason why i started a new sock before i've even halfway through that is because i wanted these needles for something else to you, for doing little swatches you didn't have the other sock last time no well um that one i thought oh well i'll knit some little swatches with those that, um and so i thought that i'd get a, t a toe done nice and then i can put that on the little um sock wonder as well but this is much it's gone much much better and uh I, lo I love it and I've just been carrying and working my way through it and um, but I was watching um I got a, a blueprint subscription that I've had for a couple of months and so it's due to uh, run out um I think tomorrow or the day after for the, for the first of June and um so there was a, a toe up um sock class on there with all different types of patterns in there as well but of course I don't know if, any, if everybody's heard that blueprint is about to close down so there's a lot of uh, talk about it on Ravelry and on Facebook groups and things like that. So we, nobody really knows what's going to happen. There's been a statement made by the company, but nobody really knows what's going to happen to the content. So if you bought content when it was crafty, which I did, I've got quite a few got a lot. Uh, classes. Um, so we don't really know what's going to happen to those, which were supposedly your forever, your forever library, your forever classes. So we'll all mm. have to just wait and see. What's, yeah. what's happened so my thinking with that really is to just to let the subscription go um but it's hard to know until until there's a definitive decision i think there was a very active um conversation about it on ravelry on a group called demon trolls and they've been so if you want information there's information on there have a look at so but sad news really isn't it because it is sad news and you just literally told me before uh, we started filming this i had no idea and i have quite a lot of content on craftsy on my ipad um so yeah i do think and i think that's been one of the problems is that there's not been very much communication from the company and uh, so nobody knows and i think that includes from what i've heard or what i've read that includes the teachers as well so the teachers don't know what's going to happen to the content they've made so it's all um, it's all very much up in the air. Yeah, let's hope we don't lose our content because that would be too sad. Yeah, mm. yeah. Aww. Yeah, so I'm um, happy with my socks. Going to carry on with those. Might even put a heel in. <laughs> Go oh, wild. Finish the other socks, right? In oh yes. I'm sorry. I was supposed to show them. Oh, that'll have to be next time. Uh, yeah, my daughter's been wearing them. She doesn't care. She doesn't <laughs> care that my heel's in the ankle. So, oh, it would be very slight, slightly twisted around. Yeah, so it be yeah nice. that's, it's all right. And so, uh, yes, so she's been wearing them. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I won't make the same mistake, will I? With no. these. So I have, I have some socks that I finished, but I also thought I would talk about my other stuff that I've been making. <laughs> so oh, they're lovely. I've got, um, I finished this pair off. Um, oh, they're nice. So this is yarn from um, the Yarn Badger in a merino and bamboo base and it's called um, Fireside, the colorway. And yeah, I really liked it, really enjoyed yeah. knitting them and they fit like a glove. Um, I was thinking that I don't really like the toe that I've been doing as it's quite pointy, but it turns out I have pointy toes. so. <laughs> <laughs> It fits very nicely, so I don't think I should change. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad when it's it's like that. It looks quite round. But, um, I like those colours because they're they're bright and yet not like in your face, aren't they? They're really lovely. I I I really like them. It was it's been a joy to knit them because it's the first time I've knit with um, self striping, and it, I it found that I knit them quite fast because every time I'd be like, I'll just knit to the next colour. And then I'll be like, oh, come on, just one more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's been fun. And then I also finished off um, my hand spun. And I thought this was only going to take me like two days. And I thought I'll just whip these off and then I can get on to my next one. Well, I don't know what happened. It took me forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't enjoy knitting the second one and I don't know why. but. Um, but I have, I've finished my pair of socks. They fit nicely again. I think I've mastered the art of knitting this type of like top down with a heel and gusset um, to match my feet well. Um, so yeah, so this is from 
The five is from Spin City UK and it is Cinderella slippers. Um, so again, that was, well, yeah, I enjoyed them mostly. How many <laughs> pairs of socks have you knitted since the podcast started? Since the podcast started, so just before we started, I did finished off, I think, four pairs. And then I think it, oh, I did write this down the other day. So I did four of them and then one, two, so five, <laughs> six. I think it was like seven or something. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah, but some of them were already half objects. So this is the one I'm currently working on. <clears throat> I haven't finished. I've got my circular needles. These are the Chagu um, circular ones. Mm -hmm. So they're interchangeable, but they're mini as well, which I really like. Um, and so this is from Lazy Kate Textiles Yarn, and this is in the colorway Byrony. Uh, oh, honestly, it makes me just really want ice cream. I really love it. <laughs> it's such a look. I, like I like how it looks in the sock. That was yeah. Yeah, I just, I really love the subtle changes in, in the colour and how the yellow comes in. Oh, I've genuinely really enjoyed knitting these. Oh, God. And to say this, that um, my hand's been a bit sore after warping. But yeah, I still knitted um, that much in the evening when my hand was sore, so I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> so, I to be careful. yeah, and then I've got, this is really cute. One second, let me, oh, it's a bit trapped. Don't know if you'll be able to see. I got these um, laser oh. stitch markers. This is an Animal Crossing one from um, Yarnish Tree, and they're just really cute. So, because I'm currently obsessed with the uh... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bit different. So this one was my first. Um, it was top down, but I did an afterthought heel. So I talked about okay. this in the last episode. Um, so I didn't quite get the foot length right, but I'm going to do it exactly the same. This this one is exactly the same, but I think I can cut off. So I, I knitted um, 15 centimeters from where I put the heel in. Um, so I've got size six feet, UK size six. And so I think I can cut uh, about a centimeter off before I start the toe. Okay. There was a tiny bit of, I mean, it doesn't bother me. It, was, it wasn't that much, but there was about a centimetre of just no toes in that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely lovely. I'm really enjoying it. I genuinely am very much so enjoying it. <laughs> so oh, God. so God. that's my socks. And I will quickly talk about my other projects because I know I've got a lot of knitting. So two projects that I've been doing. So... This one is in my antler and, antler and acorn little bag, which is in Harris tweed and yellow. That's um, lovely. It is. It is. Show at the bottom, Heather. Oh, very nice. So that's Harris tweed. That's lovely. Yeah, it's got little pockets in. Um, so I wanted to do a find your fade, find your fade shawl. Mm -hmm. But I got really stressed out at the thought of having to find, um, you know, the gradient of yarn because um, I think a couple of years ago I bought some yarn and each individual one is really beautiful um, from It's a Stitch Up and I put it in my shopping cart and I was like, I think this all goes together. But when I knitted it up on my knitting machine, I just wasn't happy with the colours together. And though I, I'm so I'm, I'm going to rip it out and knit socks <laughs> with them. Um, so I thought, why not buy a sheepies boil with a pre-made gradient? Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. So I tried, tried to choose a gradient where I thought I would wear it in the winter. So it does have a flash of quite bright orange, but it is more like a um, muted beigey and blue, and then a lighter brown and beige. And I thought that would look. It's quite muted, but also with the flash of orange. So I thought that would be quite nice. So this is the one where I've, I've messed up. So I'm going to have to pull it back. And my friends were laughing at me from how it currently looks. <laughs> 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 it's I'm not. Kind of <laughs> yeah. but, um, so this is what I'm currently doing. And I don't, I don't know. It just kind of messed up around here. 
So I'm going to pull out all the lace work that I was doing. But I think it will be nice once I get going on it. So how much is one of those? Oh, I can't remember. It was like £20, I think. But it is a thousand metres of fingering weight yarn. If you're intimidated by choosing colours, that would work in a, in a fade. Or if you're, you know, not everybody has the money to spend like for five skeins of, of yarn, of hand dyed yarn. And then, you know, it, it's, it can be, it can be paralyzing with making the right choices. Whereas something like that takes it all out, doesn't it? Takes that all out of the equation and you just start knitting. Exactly. That's what I thought. I was like, just buy a colorway that I like, and then I don't have to worry about spending because it could cost up to like if you're spending about 15, 20 pound on, you know, beautiful hand dyed yarn for it, you know, and then you'd be buying five, five of them or something, then you know, you're talking about close to 100 pounds. And then if you don't like your fade. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But if you wanted to support a hand dyer um, with something in like a fade like that, Pook yarns. She does really uh, lovely gradient, uh, like cakes, yarn cakes, doesn't she? And I think she does them in, she does like 100 grams. I think she does them 150 grams as well. And um, so you've got, your, you've got your, your budget there covered. We can't all, um, yeah. I mean, if I, didn't, if I didn't dye my own, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure I'd, be, I'd struggle to, yeah. uh, to I, make those choices. I just found it too stressful and then I just came across someone on Instagram that had done this and I was like bingo yeah yeah it's a great idea yeah and so then you know I, I can't tell you who made this knitting bag or where I got it from it's I've had it for years but I've got a little sock one as well and it's probably um sorry political <laughs> that is um <laughs> don't want to show a political badge but um uh, it's probably my favourite little sock bag because it's got little pockets in and yeah. Anyway. So this one is a jumper and so this is um, my Felix pullover um, in Malabrigo Rio in Reflecting Pool. And so I'm just finishing, I've got, I think I've got about an inch of just plain knitting before I um, split for my sleeves. But you can see the, can you see it? The lace work. Oh, the lace. Yeah, that's lovely. I love that colour as well. It is, it's lovely, isn't it? I love like a tealy turquoise. And so yeah. it fits. I've checked. Um, and yeah, it's just nice. It, it, to be honest, I put it on and I was just in, absolutely in love with it. I've not put on a jumper that I've made before and being that in love with how it fits me. And I, we'll see after I get past the arm, armpits, whether it's too baggy or anything. But um, Genuinely, I really like it and it's really soft and I love the colour, so. Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> I got another little stitch marker from Yarnistry from, um, it's a Studio Ghibli themed one and it's um, a cat from Kiki's Delivery Service. So. Oh, it's very cute. Um, so that's, um, that's all my knitting for this week. So, spinning. Spinning, right. Well, that's, that's what I've been doing. I've been spinning. And um, what, I've, what I've found is that, well, when I've been teaching spinning, I've always said, and I still believe it, is that if you want to buy perfect yarn, then go and get some commercial yarn. Um, and um, I very much stand by that because I love the texture and the irregularities of, of hand spun yarn but I've also thought well while I'm in lockdown I should try new things push my push myself out of those you know um narrow um thoughts and try something new so I've been spinning at some merino and it's hand dyed merino and so what I did was um I've been with my sample book <coughs> show it which, which is this one I'm getting all mixed up with my books here now so I've got the fiber the purple fiber and then I've spun the yarn just like about because I said everything was going to be around about four ply and um, finger room weight 
And so I've carried on with that. So I've got the two little samples of yarn there. Now these two samples have been plied differently. So I've started to measure the twists per inch just to see how different that would make the fabric when it was done. And so this one on uh, the, let's see, this one here, that is traditionally plied. And I've just done it by eye when I was watching the telly and didn't really pay much attention to it. it doesn't show up so well, does it, on the camera, but we will take pictures, won't we, Heather, and put them in later. And this one here, that has been a measured ply. So every, I've measured the twists per inch on that ply. And they'll, I've taken a little video to show how I did it. No, everybody says this. Didn't. If you ask 10 spinners, there'll be 10 different ways to do anything. So this is how I worked it out. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I wanted to measure the twist, the angle of twist. So um, we have a look at this one. And this is the one that was measured. This has been a measured ply. And it is better. I can see that it is better and it's more consistent. And I would have liked it if I'd have had access to a protractor. I would have measured the angle of twist on that, but I, I haven't. We're going to try and see if we can get one um, and measure that as well. And it's definitely, definitely different. So one of them is much more even, much more consistent, which is that one. Um, but I have to say that for me, I love the inconsistencies and I love the texture. Are they the same wraps per inch? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because the well, just from what I can see on the camera, the one that has got the consistent, the one where you actually counted how many twists you put in it, that one looks like a more open fabric. I don't know whether it is in real life or just the way the light's reflecting off it. Well, it's supposed to be the same. It's supposed yeah. to be the same, unless my mind's been wandering. Because but I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, you know what? And that is like my, um, you know, I said I've got my Zoom loom. That's exactly how my little notebook looks like with little sample stuck in and then a little Zoom um, sample. I think it's a worthwhile exercise to do because I think that even if you decide not to do it and you think, oh, it's too much, too much faff or, you know, I want something that looks more homemade. If you were starting off with, off with, well, this is the project that I want to make. What is going to make that project look the best that it can possibly be? And sometimes you want a more refined, more even, um, an, e an even garment. So that would be, so then you would measure your twist per inch and that would be something that you would pay more attention to. Whereas if you want something in, say, in, in hand weaving, I was thinking in weaving a little bit of texture in your in your uh, fabric is going to make all the difference and i i love it so it's decisions it's having the ability to make decisions isn't it yeah one of my favorite pieces of weaving that i've i've done is um it was an overshot pattern with my own hand spun and i did purposely make it thick and thin but you know in some places it's, it i didn't really control it i just kind of like went oh it's a bit thinner oh it's a bit thicker but i just love that you know the texture of it from in some areas it looks kind of worn because it's really thin and then in some areas it's really like thick. And i just i really love the effect of one of my favorite things is doing overshot with um hand spun yarn i think yeah and i think that whatever if whatever works for you in yeah. terms of spinning so if you're spinning for therapy and you want to spin while you're watching the telly at night and you don't want to think about it or if you want to spin and you want to measure every i don't know every half a bobbin with your angle of twist and twist per inch and and take it to the the most technical spin you can then that's that's fine as well and and i think that in some cases there can be snobbery in everything and there definitely is in spinning and weaving yeah. um but who cares just do do whatever what makes you while, while i'm thinking about that where after last last time when we were talking about a zoom loom Liz, who's a friend of both of ours, I know, and a, and a weaver in Liverpool, she sent me a Zoom loom through the post. Isn't that lovely? And a little, in a little, a little box with a note from Liz, and um, so, so kind. And so that's what I've been able to use to make the samples that I've done. And do you know what? I've really, really enjoyed it. So my next, I'll leave that and, and I don't know, use it for, for some kind of uh, project. Today I've got an Ashford traditional spinning wheel here and I've put a little tie there 
on the drive band so that I'll be able to see how many times the wheel is going round because we're going to keep an eye on how many twists we put into our plied yarn. So the important thing is at the moment is to keep the wheel um, at the same distance away. Um, something that's comfortable for you. If you're, a, if you're spinning regularly, you'll know how far away the wheel you like it to be uh, comfortable. Okay, so I've got two bobbins with yarn on there as well with singles and they spun quite thinly as well. Okay, so here we go. some tension on that so I'm gonna let that feed in now bring it out to there one two three four five and in one two three four five and in one two three four five and in one two three four five and in. And what you're doing there is you're keeping an account of how many twists there are. Now it's a very sort of, um, you know, it's not super exact, but it will help you to keep an eye on the twists that are going into your plied yarn. And if we pull that out and let that sag, we can see that we have got a sag there. It's a very loose ply for five, five revolutions of the uh, wheel. If we try six, we let that go in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and in. And then we pull that back out. Let that sag so it's still, we've still got a nice sort of, oh, no, see, so we twist in there. So that gives you an idea of just like one more revolution, how many, how that will put extra twist into your into your plied yarn. So if you want to uh, make a more uh, consistent ply with your yarn, then that's one of the ways that you can uh, you can do that. But my next thing that I'm going to do a little bit of a study on is the um, the fleece that I got, the Rylan fleece. So it's washed now, and I've been carding although carding I've, I've been trying different ways of carding as well so and it's funny isn't it sorry go on well, how have you been carding then have you been using hand carders or drum carding oh, yeah I've got hand carders and I've got I've got about six pairs of hand carders I've just yeah. acquired people have given me and um, most of them are flat but some of them are curved and so I want to um I want to see what makes the difference I've been watching huge amounts of YouTube <laughs> videos to see how different people work and then I'm going to put them in the in the sample book and, and put it on the zoom loom because what I've noticed is I don't know if you've ever noticed this on like the sewing bee or the great British bake off or um, all those programs people come in and they think they're an expert on something but actually they're in an they're an expert on a very narrow um, part of that skill and so if you spin top or if you spin uh, from fleece and that's what you love and you, you're good at. You can very, very easily get stuck in a, in a, in a rut. And for me, I, I love spinning from top. And I have spun from the fleece and I've prepared a fleece to, to spin, but it wasn't really my cup of tea. But now I've got the time to do it because of lockdown. I think, well, I should push my boundaries and, and widen my knowledge. So that's what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Oh, it's really exciting and I'm really looking forward to um, seeing what, what you come out of this little study and I yeah. really maybe want to do my own and um, something that I saw on Instagram from Craft Me Happy which made me really want to have a go of is blending using a hackle. Okay. Because I've never used a hackle and I was, I was saying that right, we checked before. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is it a heckle? <laughs> That's when you show it. <laughs> um, a hackle. And so she, she's put this brilliant like DIY stuff up on her website, which I'll put in the link below. Um, and so I bought the, she's made them out of onion holders. So they're like, oh, I don't know how to describe them. They've just got sharp prongs sticking out of them. And so I'm, I've bought two and so I can stick them together and um, have a go. And so I, she did um, 
I thought it was quite a really nice, simple, when well, I say simple, it's going to be, eth well, it's going to be interesting. It's not going to necessarily be simple, but she just simply bought the primary colors. So your red, blue, and yellow. And then she's just blended them with different amounts to make different colors. And so she's it basically made a rainbow with like 24 different colors. And then she's added in varying amounts of um, white fiber as well to make more pastel colors. And it's just, I found it really interesting and it really inspired me to have a go. And I thought I'd love to learn how to use the hackle and I'd love to see if I can like blend that basically radi um, radiant, I was gonna say, um, rainbow gradient. <laughs> if I can do that, then I should be able to make all the colors that I want to almost, um, almost the actual shade that I want and blend fibers as well. So I bought some sea cell as well, because I've got some fiber back there, I won't stop and get it, but it's one of my favorites where it's merino blended with sea cell. And I think it just makes a really beautiful, Oh, shiny yarn um, and so I thought I'd like to have a go of blending in that as well so I'm, I'm really excited and my yarn from World of Wool should arrive tomorrow and I think my onion things should arrive tomorrow so I should be able to get going and have a go of them um, creating that but it, the whole point of, of we need to learn all these different skills and at different times we're going to be interested in learning different ones and yeah, I'm really excited. I, you know what? If it wasn't for lockdown, I would be over at your container being like, I know, I know, I know. It's so, it's so frustrating, isn't it? It is. It um, really is. Talking of um, blueprint and craftsy classes, I did uh, years ago. I did a, a craftsy class by Felicia Lowe, yeah, um, Sweet Georgia, and in that, and it was spinning, spinning dyed fiber, and in that, she talks about that and about it, the colors that you get by eye. So you can dye, you can dye a green fiber, can't you? Or you can blend a blue and a yellow together and you'll get your eye will compensate for it and we'll see that it is green. And so it is, it's a very clever way of operating because if you go to a show and you buy something um, and you just get carried away and buy something like, I don't know, bright yellow and bright green and you go home and go, what am I gonna do with that? Actually you can blend those fibers with other fibers and calm them down yeah. and make it into a usable thing because your eye will, will see the color that, that you've blended together, even though that fiber is yellow and that fiber is blue, you blend it together. It's so clever. I, you know what? I absolutely love that crafty class. I have it myself and I've watched it multiple times. So I might have to watch it again to have a look. And yeah, we can both do that. Another one that I have, which I was, I was looking at yesterday when I was thinking about this is, I can't remember her last name now, Esther. Um, oh, I can't remember her handle now. I'll just look. It's, here it is. It's actually open on my iPad. Um, Fiber Preparation for Spinning um, by Esther Rogers. Um, I think she's called Jazz Yarns on, on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I, she, and she goes through all the different, um, you know, using a drum carder, using hand carders, using a hackle. And um, so I, yesterday I specifically watched the bit using the hackle about how to do different blending and stuff. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. And uh, I recommend that one if, if people want to have a go looking at how you can use, make the different types of preparations using even a blending board. Um, Did you see that was on YouTube? Uh, no, sorry, it's on Craftsy. Oh, okay. But, right. uh, it is a really good class. Um, can you still buy classes on Craftsy? Yes, I think you can. I think that's one of the things that people are really nervous about. So if you did go and 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 had a big of a, a bit of a uh, you know a mad moment and bought a load of of these classes, would you then be able to download them? Because I'm sure lots of people would do that because the classes are such. Um, like a good standard aren't they really yeah, good they are good and so spinning dyed fibers by felicia Lowe is the one we were just talking about and oh, I, i've got that floor loom weaving as well yeah yeah that's that's awesome. another good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the floor loom weaving and um she uses the um loom that i actually have at home um my baby wolf shack baby oh, wolf. Oh. so that's nice i've got loads of classes on crafty i really can't you lose them like I just the list goes on. Like, yeah. 
you know, you'll have to make sure. I think there's, there is, they're talking about there's some way that you can do it. And I can't see that, you know, having bought something and being told that you can keep it forever and then for it just to disappear, but you never know, do you? No. Um, so yeah, so I think we've got quite a lot of exciting stuff coming ahead for the spinning. I, um, this is one of my bobbins um, that I have finished. I know it may not look like I have spun much from last time, but I did spin a lot just because I was looking back and I think the colours were very similar. That was what was on here, but I have, honest. <laughs> and then I am currently in the process of, um, I've spun through the first three colours of this gradient uh, on my second bobbin. I decided to do a two-ply yarn in the end. Um, but I have just, I don't know what it is, whether because we were talking about it last time, but I've just, we were saying um, in our conversation earlier that we've really got our spinning mojos back. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so what are you going to do between now and next week, next fortnight, what's, uh, what are you going to have done? I will have finished this yarn. I will have finished the second sock of this and I will have walked up my loom. Wow. That's my only experience. What about you? Um, I will have worked my way through some of that, some of the tea towels. I don't know whether I can say that I will have finished, but I'm going to give it a good go. Yeah. And then I'm going to, with the fibre, I'm going to carry on through the fibre, but I'm going to um, spin and I'm going to do some long draw. That's what I'm going to try and do. I'd really, also, I want to see if you, if possible, if you have, do you have samples of it from like, um so after you've washed it then after you've processed it in a certain way and then obviously spinning so we can see what it looks like at the different steps because I, I would like to see that and yeah. also yeah. I've got this one this this fleece that I've got here is I think I said last time is from a young girl who's got a small holding so she sent me as is as it was and I, I knew that as I um, when I when I bought it, I knew that that's how it was going to come. So it wasn't skirted and it wasn't cleaned in any way. So I've dealt with that. I've also got one in the car from a lady called Sharon Driscoll, who sells her fleeces, and hers is skirted. And so, and also as well, I have got another lady called Valerie Howells, and what she does is she skirts them, and she also cleans the fleece before you get it. So hers is a little bit more expensive, but what I want to know is which which do I prefer to spin? And yeah. would it is it better to buy one that isn't had anything done to it and it's cheaper or spend the 20 quid for a fleece, but it's gonna come and it's skirted and it's all clean. And that's one of what I want to work out is what is the best for mm -hmm. me and make a study of that really so I can see for myself what I would uh, like to do because I'd like to carry on spinning from the fleece. Yeah, um, and have something usable, really. Uh, what would be also interesting is if you tried out the different preparations, as if not from whether it's from a clean, a clean and skirted fleece, but whether you try to do it more woolen or more worsted. That would be yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm enjoying the thought that I'm going to be doing some long draw because I, I, I you know, I like that. So um, I'll make a little video about that, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> it makes you what? It makes me nervous. I've I've never really tried it though. I've I've started this weird way when I'm spinning now, um, where you know I, I usually do like you know the short draw where I pinch and push and like that. Um, so I don't inch foot. I'm pushing it forward anyway. So now I've started where I let the the twist go up to the fibre in this hand, and then just gently draw out which is quite different than I've, I've done the method that I've done before. But I've started noticing that I'm getting um, like a more even yarn because I'm not drawing it out by pinching my fingers and deciding how much is going in to get the twist. The twist is already going in and kind of pulling itself out. I don't know how to describe it. But Well, are you making a sample of it, Heather, and keeping the record is the thing so we can all see? Um, no, <laughs> it's just this. <laughs> It's just like this is a mix of like short draw, like do 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 do, and then it's a mix of like the longer, like little. So, but we'll see. Well, hopefully, it'll come out nice. It's quite thin and quite. Yeah, it's lovely. Quite, quite consistent. Thin. Yeah. So, we'll see. Well, so yeah. we'll see it 
in a fortnight. Yep. Um, great chat. And I hope everyone out there is safe and well and enjoys their crafting. And, and hopefully you would like to share your projects with us. So um, yeah, that yeah. would be great. That would be, that would be great. Great. brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So see you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.